Magic. Martial arts. The next few minutes will be devoted to understanding the relationship between the two. But before getting the art of the matter, it is necessary to understand the relevance of magic for the study of martial arts. The study of martial arts practitioners led me to one observation. Their motivation is directly attributable to an imaginary maintained by the cultural industries. The imaginary of martial arts is identifiable by model of aesthetic reference, which are expressed by body techniques associated with the label martial arts. These references also go hand in hand with a moral and ethical behavior that governs to use of the techniques. For example, mythical characters or film heroes use them only to defend the dominant values of their society. Thus, martial art techniques are interpreted as something good and morally desirable. For illustration, good, not good. Let us underline the fact that when we talk about groups of practitioners, mythical stories and cinema, these things are related to free time and leisure. The justification for the existence of martial art techniques is therefore outside the areas and social time allocated to productivity and work. This means that the social utility of martial arts lies in the world of entertainment, especially through the aesthetic of bodily expression, that is so to say, a performance that allows us to live vicariously the fantastic aspects of imagination. Hmm, what does it mean? These fantastic aspects are understood as techniques of the body voluntarily shown as an extrapolation, an exaggeration or an extrapolation of the intentionality of those who carry them out, always with a view to defending moral values. However, what is important to note is that the abilities that the use of martial arts technique can provide can range from physically possible gesture to magical powers. Here lies the interest of studying the relationship between martial arts and magic. Practicing a martial art or consuming cultural projects related to martial arts can become, for some people, the sign of their salvation, the proof of their moral virtue, and ultimately give meaning of their life. The supernatural dimension of martial art is an open door to the religious, not because there are references to Eastern religions in martial arts school, books and film, but because the magical aspect is experienced as something religious. In itself, the religious is an imaginary that irrigates the social overflowing religious institu institutions and is constantly renewed. In spite of the fact that magic has long been considered as competitive pagan practices condemned by the church, today all meaningful practices are no longer regulated by traditional orthodoxy but rather by the logic of a market of goods of salvation. The belonging of martial arts to the magical religious phenomenon was made possible by its incorporation into the sphere of dominant social values, notably the family, justice, and the ethics of duty. These values are those of the modern day action hero, partly composed by a Christian heritage in the West. This is the whole mechanism of reception of the magical techniques 
of martial arts because they are interpreted by individuals, real or fictional, who carry the same values as the majority. In this way, martial arts correspond to the expectation forged by the values and representation of a common social imaginary. The fact that martial arts are considered to be a magical power helps to keep a myth alive. I need an example. Dear student, there is a truth that martial arts carry and that is revealed in the effectiveness of the techniques. The secret of this truth is transmitted in an initiatory way by a sacred tradition that dates back to the golden age of the warrior monks. <laughs> Thus, the magical religious dimension of martial arts finds its specificity in its way of enlightening the social processes that lead the individual to self-realization, allowing him to become someone in the eyes of others by attaining a status linked to skills most often fantasized. Moreover, this myth participates in a whole theoretical context that explains the organizations of the world by esoteric forces and visible to the uninitiated. Ultimately, the secrets to understanding the world and being able to gain power to control one's own life and social environment would be found in the origin of things. Even a golden age, uh, or an idealized and romanticized past. The origins of things serves as a metaphysical foundation and legitimization to explain the essence of existence. Popular martial arts literature does indeed speak of an essence of martial arts, or essence of any discipline, as if a person of our time were practicing in the continuity of a line of belief in the meaning of martial arts. By example, meaning of life, meaning of life, essence of ninjutsu, essence of Aikido, and Bible charity. Do you catch my book? Yes. Cool. In short, the magical dimension of martial arts evokes the religious by its belonging to the idea of primordial tradition. It is a first revelation from which modern practitioners would have deviated. The supporters of this tradition consider that all official and contemporary martial art ways are only imperfect expression because they diverge, according to them, from the original reference. The adhesion of this conception of the martial art tradition stems from a strong nostalgia often nourished by the unhappiness of living in society. The world of martial arts can thus become a refuge an emotional protection leading to desire the advent of this golden age. This invented area comes with an imagery that is inherited from the ideological current of the counterculture period for, of 60s. This period saw the birth of ideas such as a world cultural heritage. Mm. A common tradition beyond all spiritualities. A universal truth. There is a striking resemblance between the discourse on the martial art tradition and that of counterculture. As a cultural product, martial arts participate in a social imaginary that has long been recuperated by the cultural industries. Like many others, areas of society, martial arts contribute to the continuity and democratization of a functional and fantastic universe whose function is to act as a buffer zone for collective tension 
impulses and frustrations with regard to work, lack of recognition, and loss of refer reference points. In short, for some practitioners and fans of popular culture, martial arts are experienced as a self-realization or search for oneself, or even an existential exploration or quest. Against a cultural backdrop for capitalism and market logics, cultural symbols relating to the martial arts imagination have been commodified to fit the dominant social paradigm in the way of exchanging and transmitting both tangible and intangible cultural elements. The magical dimension of martial art is no exception in this context of competition it can even be considered an inescapable ingredient. Martial arts have become one of the viable options in the face of the demand of salvation goods. The traditional narratives of martial arts, always reinvented in the taste of the day, intersect with those of esotericism, paranormal, shamanism, white magic, druidism, occultism, black magic, witchcraft, alchemy, parasciences, and many others, as long as the ideological content is there to promote the religious, spiritual, or martial experience. Whatever name the adepts consider appropriate to give to their experience. Apart from the discourse, we must ask ourselves what distinguishes magical religious practice from martial arts. Hmm. It is the technicis. Okay, not my technique. What technique? Hmm. Are you okay? Hey, bye. They are not differentiated by their effectiveness, but by the intention of the technician. Is the conduit true? which the technique becomes personalized and unique. The way of being and living the ritual of learning and execution comes here to qualify the doing. It is for this reason that the master-student's relationship is so valued in martial arts. It favors the staging of the initiatory process. The reputation and charisma of the master, the secret character imposed on the initiate as a technical ritual, constitute in itself a privileged relationship of authority that ensures the transmission and reproduction of the emotional charge that animates the gesture. So, do you remember the movie Kung Fu Panda? The scene one? Do you want to learn Kung Fu? Then, I am your master! This relationship is much sought after by middle-class individuals, among others, who are dissatisfied with their social status and suffer from a lack of recognition. By adhering to the magical practices of the martial art, these people find a regain meaning coherence, if only by the syncretism of the meaning given to the desired cult object, a black belt. My precious, my precious, my precious, or to the covet technical mastery, though in the split. I must admit, it's hurt. Help me. You kick me. No. Nope. In addition to adherence to practices, techniques serve specifically to develop a perception of control and power over their lives. According to statistics, young people aged 35 and under, with a high level of education and little professional recognition, tend to enhance their self-esteem by becoming experts 
in one of the magical religious social spheres. In closing, there are many reasons why people adhere to or dissociate themselves from magical religious belief or idea in the world of martial arts. Some people believe in them in the hope of discovering a primordial tradition, give access to a better world. Others use them as speeches to convince a clientele without really believing in them. But most often, it is an entertaining imagination that seduces fan communities. Thanks for watching.